a new budget and a new police commissioner. We have an all angles double header for you tonight. I'm Dion Jackson Malo. Later on, thoughts on the success of the finance minister's budget presentation and the implications of the announcements that he made. First, though, earlier today, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang announced that Deputy Commissioner of Police Dr. Kevin Blake is going to take up duties as Jamaica's next police commissioner on Tuesday, March 19. Now, he's not one of the senior officers that the public is used to hearing from. So producer Giovanni Dennis has a bit more about our next Top Cop. Dr. Kevin Blake is the next police commissioner of Jamaica. Dr. Blake, who is one of four deputy commissioners, will assume the post on Tuesday, March 19. The tenure of Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, will end on March 18. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says he received a letter this morning from the Police Service Commission appointing Dr. Blake as the new police commissioner. I think we have reached a level in the force where the promotional process is such that the Individuals who rise to the top all have the capacity to go forward. And we had four deputies who I think were excellent police officers. They were interviewed and the service commission identified Dr. Kevin Blake, a, who is among the younger commission, deputy commissioners, as the best prospect to lead the force at this point in time. But who is Dr. Kevin Blake, who will become the 15th Jamaican police commissioner when he takes office next week? Dr. Blake joined the Jamaica Constabulary Force in 2002. He was appointed Deputy Commissioner of Police on June 1, 2020 after serving as Assistant Commissioner of Police for seven years prior. He has held several significant assignments in the JCF to include Command of Police Areas 3 and 4, National Intelligence Bureau, Planning, Research and Development Branch and the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch. Dr. Blake was conferred with the Order of Distinction in the rank of Officer in 2021. He is the holder of a PhD in Sustainable Development from the University of the West Indies. He also has a Master of Science degree in Computer-Based Management Information Systems and a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science and Mathematics. Dr. Blake has also attained certification in several specialized areas relevant to policing to include but not limited to Strategic Command, Strategy and International Security, Major Event Security Management and Caribbean Defense and Security. Dr. Blake's appointment as Jamaica's 15th Native Commissioner of Police follows the conclusion of a comprehensive selection process that was conducted by the Police Service Commission. Giovanni Dennis, For All Angles. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Joining me now in studio, we have social anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale, and we also have attorney at law and the chair of Jamaicans for Justice, John Clark. Great to have you, gentlemen, as always. Now, I know you want to dig your teeth into the new commissioner. Well, you know, no. in a matter of speaking, but with, I do want to just at least briefly talk about the outgoing commissioner because Major General Anthony Anderson, he took up the job of police commissioner six years ago, March 19, 2018, and... Uh, John Clark, let me ask you first, how, how do we measure his success? I know we're used to looking at murder rates, murder, yes. murder figures, and if that's what we're looking at, in 2017, that's a year before he took up office, that was, according to the police, our third most murderous year, 16, 17 murders. 2018, he took up, what, a third into the year. We were down to 1287, and last year now, 1393. So if you're looking at that measure, I don't know if you have another measure. What do you say about how well he's done? Well, for starters, what he has done is a public service. And um, one can think, for example, of the welfare division, I believe, in the JCF. And you will see these tit um, tidbits in relation to long service award for many police officers. So we recognize that the task as police commissioner is one of the hardest tasks any citizen can take on. And he took on this leg, he ran it, he um, dedicated his time, and we have to thank him for the public service that he had done for our country during this time period. And we have to wish for the new incoming police commissioner that he can continue some of the good work that the previous commissioner, well, uh, as of the 18th of March, would have done. And one of those work would be the work in the welfare department. And we, at JFJ, are concerned in relation to the moral and the view that many police officers have that perhaps um, the, as a society we don't appreciate them 
And that's because of that, some of them want to just leave our shores to find greener pasture. And you have a high turnover rate, and one hopes that this commissioner will, the new, new incoming one, will continue the work that the old commissioner had done in relation to ensuring officers, especially those who served long periods of time, were publicly acknowledged and appreciated, and that somehow this new commissioner will continue that work, continue the work in the welfare, continue the work in relation to moral building in the force, but importantly advocate along with the rank and file to ensure that one, the salary improve. Uh, ho ho hold on, before you get to the new commissioner, what you want him to do, Herbert Gale, let me, let me come to you. How do you measure um, Anthony Anderson's success? Right, within the context of what was happening, 2005 and 2017 were among the darkest times here in terms of homicide. Uh, I would I would say somewhat command, commendable. Uh, the issue for me, though, uh, in this area is when do you pull away from uh, the paramilitary, yeah. the strong arm, the the suppression. Of, in the states of emergency. Right. Uh, towards a more balanced set of policing frames, and that has been for me the weakness, not just here but elsewhere. So it sounds as if you're saying it's a strain in terms of what was accomplished on the state Within of emergency. Within the context of, what, of, where right. the, of where the country was, mm -hmm. uh, the, yes, there's a relevance in having uh, that type of a commissioner and that type of policing. But uh, we, we still need, for me, life is a journey, we still need to move towards a balanced frame of policing. Are we in a balanced society yet, though? Because, I mean... Uh, I think just you looking have, I at think, the stories over the past couple yes, of days, yesterday I, news, two bodies found somewhere. Right, but I think you have to take the risk of starting. You can't keep doing what you've been doing from 1962, when the homicide rate was 4.2, to the average of 48.6 now, and you're still doing the same thing. We have to take the risk of heading towards a balanced system. Okay. Want to comment on that, John? Yes. Well, um. I agree entirely with, 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 Doc, with what Doc is saying, because ultimately, um, at JFG, for example, we weren't too happy with the focus over the uh, almost um, entire period, latter period of this commissioner's focus um, tenure in relation to I the states. I think that's what you call massive understatement. <laughs> yes, in relation to the states of public emergency. You objected vociferously <laughs> and <laughs> constantly. Like yes, that's more like it, but the, the, the point is, um, the concern we have is that as a country, and um, we have always faced the monster of crime, and when we have emergency policing measures, what inevitably happens, and we experience it on the ground, is that police officers, who are in fact a very limited um, quantity in the first place, are pulled from other divisions to deal with the emergency. Because you'd have, and the so-called emergency is to lock up somebody for a period of like 30 days, 90 days, and then put them on the road because you'd have enough to charge them. So what, we're, what we would have liked or would have hoped is that some of the resources that was spent on state of public emergency and the time would have been spent on more long-term crime-fighting measures because Is that a police commissioner issue though or a Ministry of National Security issue? Well, the problem issue? is this police sir, um, commissioner, or the outgoing one, if I remember correctly, was a national security advisor to the government and then you move from that role to the police commissioner. But inevitably, what, and if I understand correctly, many times when we objected, one of the things that the government would remind us is that the commissioner and the head of the army essentially recommended this thing. So essentially, who are you, human rights group, to be saying otherwise when the experts are saying this is the way to go? But the problem that we think that it causes us and a long-term problem that the country will have to suffer from is that ultimately some police officers thought that the way to deal with crime in particular communities was not to effectively investigate the actors and bring cases that can have them locked up for 40 years, but just lock them up on the state of emergency, let them cool out. And when the state of emergency can't work out, these same bad actors are essentially returning to the community and there's no effective way. All right, hold that to, thought for me, because when we come back after the break, I want to pick up with there, because that's our that's a interesting juncture then to say this is where the new commissioner, this is the landscape the new commissioner is coming into. So what is he facing and what are our guests hoping for from him? Stay tuned. We'll soon come.